Jason, and it's a real pleasure to have you on the show. Um, you know, it's a true honor to, to have you. And um, yeah, you were referred to uh, a really great guest of mine, uh, uh, Louise Bedford. She referred you and she said amazing things about you as well. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'd like to welcome you on the show. Qua, thank you for, uh, for having me on. Like, it's a real, real pleasure to be here. Yeah, awesome. Cool. So um, you've got a really amazing story about, um, you also built Motion Trader, which is a really amazing platform to help traders as well. But um, before we get into that, I was thinking, let's have a look at your background. So I believe in back in 1991, you, um, you're working in Bankers Trust, right? And that's how it all started. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So oh. it was, um, uh, I got my yeah, started off in life with a bit of bit of luck in that respect. Like, so I started there in my last my last year of uni. Mm. Uh, a mate had been working there, had been working there. Um, he must have had like a part time role during the holidays or or something. And they offered him a job to to go part time during his um, last year of uni. And he was mm. a he was at a university which was oh probably about like an hour away from the city, so he couldn't really make it work. But he said, "Look, I've got a mate who might be um, might be keen," and that was that was me. I was at Sydney University, which was just you know a couple of train stops from the from the CBD, mm. and uh, so I went in and had an interview and, and and got the job, and that was my that was my introduction to to a to investment bank dealing room, and uh, uh, so look, that was you know that was that was like it was really like a gift because those places were just so hard to, and they still are. They're so hard to get into. There's only a, a few of them. Mm. And there are so many people, you know, so many, you know, you know, young guys or, and girls coming out of uni who want to get these jobs. And uh, so I had that, that bit of a, a foot in the door through a part-time role. And that led to a graduate role the, the next year. Mm. And, uh, you know, it, it, you know it, it, it's funny. I remember going up in the, in the lift for the first time, my first, my first afternoon. So it was every afternoon after uni, I'd go in there into the dealing room. And uh, I'm in the lift, heading up, heading up. To level forty, uh, I was in the Australia Square Tower in um, in Sydney, and yeah, I can yeah, I, my heart was racing. I could feel it, I could feel the, the heart racing, and you could feel the beads of sweat coming down down my side. And then the lift doors open, and you could hear the you could hear this hum from the dealing room uh, oh. as the, as the doors were open opening. And uh, so then step into the corridor and start walking around to to the entry of the dealing room, and so then I. I've stepped in this big open space, and yeah, you know, I tell you, tell you quite. It was like it was like <laughs> stepping into a, into another world. It was like you know, you got these guys. They're standing up. They got you know a phone on either ear. Others mm. are you know, you know pointing at flashing screens and yelling out, and and, and you know, another guy's you know yelling prices to a colleague on the other side of the desk. And so it it's just like, like the movies, right? It's like a boiler room it, movie. <laughs> it, was, it was a scene from the movies. And it's wow. Like, I thought I was going to work, and now I'm on the movie set. It's uh, that's cool. It's, you know, it's sort of like I'd, I'd seen the movie that's Wall Street when I was um, I, I came out in 1987, so that was yeah. my um, that was my last year of school. So I probably saw that in my first year of uni. I thought, geez, that looks exciting. That's her world. Mm. Lo and behold, a few years later, I'm I'm standing in the in the middle of it all. And mm. uh, so yeah, look, that was my introduction to the to the uh, financial markets and the investment bank dealing room. And I just thought, look, this is amazing. This is this is this is for me. Mm. And uh, it's been it's look that that sort of um, uh, world has been what I've been in ever since. Mm. And uh, it's look, it's um yeah, there's yeah a lot of I think a lot of um, people who have success in life will tell you there's you know luck plays a plays a role on how they, they got to where they got. Mm. And when I was at school, I didn't have any idea this sort of world existed. I thought, look, maybe I'd be a, a stockbroker, something like that. Um, financial markets like you know, currency markets and bond markets, commodity markets, I didn't, didn't really know anything about that. And uh, I just kind of stumbled my, my way into it through, through um, uh, a mate's introduction to, to the bank. Mm. And uh, so, yeah, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's funny when you listen to people's stories about their paths and how they've how they've progressed, and you go, yeah, yeah well, look, that was one of those moments for me, getting that that start at the Bankers Trust, mm. and so what that did for me, it put me, it put me in a position where I was um, sitting in a in the dealing room with some of the best traders in the business, and so that really it 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 really fast track my ability to to learn uh, a lot of a lot of people have to learn their 
uh, learn, learn through books. Mm. If they want to be, a, if they want to trade and invest in markets, they get they buy a book, yeah. buy a few books, and they read them. And books are fantastic because uh, they, you know, people, most people don't have the opportunity to go and sit in the dealing room and, and, and learn from people who've been doing it for decades. But mm. I did, so I was, I was really fortunate. And uh, and then you know, as as luck would would have it, so. I'd been there, been there for a year and then the graduate roles were coming up for the next year. And mm. I thought, look, I want to get one of these graduate roles, which were really difficult to get. And, you know, I went up to the head of the dealing room and said, look, can you guys consider me for one of the roles? And, you know, because I'd been there for, for a bit and I didn't, look, I'd done a good job. I'd done some, uh, yeah, come up with some ideas which are then implemented for just for the way their admin worked. Mm. And they thought, look, okay, this guy's done, you know, he's impressed us enough to, you know, uh, consider consider these graduate roles. And the head of the room came up and said, look, okay, I've got two guys who want to, who want to speak to you. The head of the, the futures floor and the head of the, the charting department. Okay. And I instantly thought, you know, young guy in my early 20s, I thought, <laughs> oh yeah, futures floor, that sounds exciting. You know, yeah. lots of arms and yelling and, you know, colorful <laughs> jackets. All that, yeah. sort of <laughs> charting, yeah, that sounds all pretty boring. Yeah. But, you know, as luck would have it, the head of charting spoke to me first and he offered me the job, offered me the graduate role. And I wasn't about to say, Oh, look, let me, let me sleep on it. It was like, I'm in, I'm, you know, lock me in. Thanks. And, uh, and you know, when, when I look back with hindsight, it was, uh, I wouldn't have lasted on the futures floor. It wasn't, it, it it's not, it, it's very, very fast and furious. And that's not my scene. I'm more, mm. more considered and, and, and think and medium term and, and how I approach things. So, mm. yeah, I, I, again, you know, I had that that fortunate stroke of luck where the right person spoke to me first. Charting was amazing because that let me learn how markets work. And the head of charting was, he was one of the best in the business. And he said, look, markets have, have three phases. There's an up phase, a down phase, and a sideways phase. And if you can work out which phase that the market's currently in, well, there's a potential to make a lot of money. And so that had me hooked then. It was like, okay, well, mm. I've come from here where the professors have told me that markets are efficient and you can't, nobody can really get an edge because everything's already priced in. Okay. But then I've got these, um, my, my um, boss in the charting department telling me otherwise. He's saying, no, no, markets move in trends. If you can work out what that trend is through the market's phase, well, then you've got an you have an edge over people who don't really appreciate that. And mm. uh, so that's uh, the the investment approach which I've I've carried through to this day. It's like looking for for price trends in markets, mm. and uh, it's um, yeah, it, it's the way I've uh, approached the markets and the way uh, I, I help others through my you know, my motion trader service and the services I've done prior to that to, to, to make sense of the markets and learn a process to take advantage of that sort of uh, market movement themselves. Mm, that, that's amazing. I mean, a lot of people tend to, um, when, when they go into, when they start their career, they have some sort of curiosity, you know, they have a curiosity about a certain subject and then they take a step of, you know, they might apply for a job, but you sort of like fell into it. So it was, you know, like you said, it's all about um, that luck that luck component where someone mentioned that opportunity and then you just went into, <laughs> went into the floor. Right. So um, that's really amazing there. And um, you also mentioned that you're a very analytical person as well. So you seem very calm and do, do you think that's a part of um, your success in terms of, of um, you know, making a lot of profits on the market is having that calm analytical mindset, not to, not to get too emotional or is that? Yeah, I think the- that's um, I think look, Calmness and because I can get pretty emotional is, when it comes to the markets. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah I, I, emotional control is is so important. Yeah, if you're going to do anything in in financial markets, and look with with a lot of lot of career paths as well. Um, calmness really does does help. Mm. Uh, look, look, some people are hotheads and they can progress a long way in their their careers. Uh, but I think people who can control their emotions, they do have an edge on those who, who can't. And look, that, that's something that you, I think that you, that you learn. You can learn over time. Not every, you don't have to be born a calm person, um, but it's just learning, learning, learning patience and learning to, to take, a, 
step back and absorb information and and then then react accordingly i think that yeah. makes a yeah it it it, it makes it a, a lot easier to like if you're investing in the market it makes it a, a lot easier to uh, make good decisions because when you're in a in a fluster it's it people are prone to make snap judgments and snap judgments are often wrong you need to have a, a process that you can follow that um, increases the odds of making a good call mm-hmm. and yet the emotional control is the key to that yeah yeah i um i used to trade uh, forex uh, i was doing that for a few years and okay. yeah yeah so you know i was i was reading a lot of books like um you know market wizards and um and also the the trading game as well and i was also doing a lot of trades but then i what happened was i i did it was like six sequential losses so i made a lot of losses and then i got really frustrated and then and then i tried to do revenge trading and then i re- realized that you know that's the whole emotional game to it and i found that um you know really great traders are very calm they can like you said they can control their emotions as well so uh, I think that's a big component. What you just said there was, is really, yeah. so you're not born yeah, like calm, right? Um, yeah. yeah. Like that, those things you mentioned, like, you know, the, the, the revenge trade and, and stuff, it's, it happens a lot. So, mm. so someone will, will uh, like a string of losses. Like I've, yeah. I've had this, I've had like, you know, the, the long string of losses where you question what you're doing going, and is this, is this right? And <laughs> we always question that. A lot of people that, yeah. a string of losses and go, okay, well, this isn't working anymore. I'm going to do stop and, and do something else. Mm. Um, this is where having a, having a set process is so important uh, and having confidence in that process. So you can have a string of losses and continue on following that process. Cause often it's about following a process through the market cycle, not just if you follow something for, for a couple of weeks, well, it just mm. may happen to be a couple of weeks where that process isn't, isn't working. The mm. markets just aren't, uh, uh, unsuitable to what that application is but had it been continued on for a, a few more weeks or a few more months well the whole situation may change mm. so it's about having to stick with things for a while and having the confidence that look i've got a i've got a robust approach i know this worked in the past i know this worked well i know this worked for a number of years hey hasn't worked for the last couple of weeks the last couple of months that's okay that happens no mm. process works all of the time, day in, day out. Uh, there's, there's periods where it, where it doesn't. And, and then like you, you were talking about the, the revenge trade, that's like, that's where like, you know, things like people, um, they'll start to, they'll go, oh, oh look, this, this, this stock has cost me money, it owes me money. I've got to, mm. this stock needs to pay me back. So they'll, you know, they'll, they'll keep at it or they'll increase their position size. Yep. And, and often it just leads to disaster because once you start increasing your yeah. your, your risk in something, well then the the, you know, the the losses snowball. You may get lucky and it goes up, and you go, oh look, I'm now at break even. That's fine, but often it doesn't work like that. Mm. And I think that um, you know, this is where the emotional <clears throat> control is so important because the, the emotional control is the the glue that holds the the whole thing together, and um, you know. Without the emotional control, I think I think it's really hard to be successful at anything, whether it's putting on a trade or setting up a business or, or you know, doing something within a within a different career path. You've got to have that emotional control. Mm. And, uh, tell you this, tell you this great story. I was watching um watching this interview with Roger Federer, mm. uh, not long that ago. That guy's yeah yeah he's really good. So, so yeah, Roger's fantastic. He he is he's the, the like I look at him and he's the, the coolest, calmest. Mm. guy on the court and you know that's one of his amazing traits which has made him made him who he is yep. but but so so roger's talking and he says well, look everyone sees me as this cool calm guy but it actually wasn't always like that you know roger was oh, really? actually a hothead <laughs> okay absolutely no idea and uh, he said yeah, yeah when i was um, when i was a young guy a teenager I was uh, i was throwing rackets at the net i was um you know yelling out at the umpire uh, you know, giving you know, you know, commentary when I'd you know, miss a shot, mm. and uh, yeah, real, real McEnroe like like behaviour, and uh, I was you know, I was amazed by this. Oh, that's a. And he said, um, he said the turning point for him came when he was sixteen. Okay. He was at the uh, he was at the training centre, and he got frustrated, and he um, he threw his racket at a and he threw his racket, 
and it's hit a screen, this, this, this new scoring, scoring screen or something, and smashed it. And uh, his penance for the next couple of weeks was to clean out the, clean out the bathrooms or something like that. Mm. And, you know, he's scrubbing away and he goes, he thinks to himself, look, this is, this is not working. Oh, I, can't, I can't go on like this. I've got to do something. I've got to change. Mm. And he said it took him two years. Two years? Two years for him to find, and this is what he calls it, took two years to find the fire and the ice. So the fire is that, that burning desire to, to be successful and to, you know, to, to, to come back from a tough spot and to fight on. And the ice is the emotional control to, to hold it all together and you know, be cool under fire, you know, to be down, be down you know, um, two sets to one and, and, and say, okay, I can come back from this. Mm. And you know, if you don't come back, well, it's fine. Sometimes you don't come back but to put yourself in a position where you can come back. And that's what a lot of people don't do. They don't put their, themselves in a position where they can come back. They go, ah, oh, it's not working. Mm. I've had six losing trades, not working, I'm out. Uh, but to say, no, okay, I'm, I'm down, but I'm not out. I can keep, I can keep going. And, uh, and so this was just, you know, it, it, was, it, was, it was amazing to sort of like hear that story from, from Roger. And, uh, and he said, look, once he found the fire and the ice, his career just took off and you can see where he went. And you look at some of the, look at some of the, 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 the tennis guys from now where they are a bit hot headed. They may have the raw talent, mm. but they, they spend so much time, you know, carrying on and, and getting, getting cranky at the world that I don't know, maybe their, their talent is, is not where it could potentially be. But this is what, what Roger shows. It's like you can try your emotions you control yourself and you put yourself in the position to be successful. Mm. And, uh, and look, that's what he did. And yeah, I went to my, um, I went to my, my 30 year high school reunion. I was a couple of years ago and uh, it was, it was just so interesting looking around the room. So you've got, you've got the full, you have the full spectrum. You have the, the guys who have been super successful and well, the, the guy, and then you got the, then down the other end, well, some of these guys actually weren't there, but you hear about them. So mm. at the successful end, you got the guys who were, you know, running investment banks yep. uh, at the, you know, they, they were at the top of their, their careers, either like, you know, top surgeons or um, you know, high positions in, in, in law and accounting. You got the guys flying the jumbo jets. You got that end. You got the guys who are running their own, you know, building their own, businesses and yeah, have done, done very well for themselves. Mm. Then you come, you've got the big middle bracket. Now, these are the, these are the, you know, the, the middle manager types. So they may be, you know, they give the impression of being on, being on you know, good money, but having, you know, big debts to, to match. And then, you know, it's um, you know, the more, I don't know, more, more the treadmill type, type guys where they're, mm. you know, they're, you know, they're moving forward or they're trying to move forward, but they're kind of like, you know, marking time as well. Yep. And then you've got the guys who, you know, you know, who haven't really, really um, you know, got away so well. And uh, look, I heard of a, you know, some guys, you know, struggling with addictions. I heard of, even heard of like um, one guy had been sleeping rough. Mm. And I think to myself, I go, look, how, how does this happen? We all sat in the same classrooms. We grew up in the, in the same, same affluent area. Mm. We had we had parents with with similar values, gave us the same sort of upbringing. So, what causes one person to head off on this side, and another to go go this way? And and I don't know. I don't have the answer. But I look at my own situation and go, well, you know, because like, well, how how did it work out for me? How did how did I end up over here? And I think of uh, my path. I go, well, look. I've always been always been good at sticking at things. So even as a youngster, I'd be good at you know at sticking at something. Um, whether I wanted to you know try and get good at you know playing cricket, I'd stand out in the backyard on my own for an hour throwing a throwing a, a golf ball on a wall and trying to trying to whack it with a cricket stump. You know, I'd seen Bradman doing something like that, and I thought, okay, it's good enough for Bradman. It's good enough <laughs> for the, uh, the under twelves. So I'll have a crack at it. So I'd do mm. stuff like that. So I was good at sticking at things. And, uh, and, and the other thing was I'm, I've, um, I've been good at taking opportunities and, you know, if something will come along, I'll say, well, look, you know, have a go, see what happens. 
And I think, you know, you put those two together, you know, sticking at things and taking opportunities, you, you give you, you put probability on your side for having good things, having, having positive things, things happen. And if you do that consistently, it's, um, you know, it does compound. Uh, like we spoke earlier about the, comp- mm. um, the, the, the compound effect where, you know, a whole lot of, you know, little things join together to produce big things. And mm. I think, you know, putting that sticking at things and taking opportunities, you, you stick a whole lot of, um, you know, you know small achievements up. together, which really does grow over time. Um, but again, you only get that with consistency as well. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, look, you know, that's um, you know, all, all about, you know, yeah, it's, you know, it's funny mm. how we got to this point through through yeah. uh, talk about emotional control, but then yeah, you know, it's yeah. all, sort of, uh, all sort of interrelated mm. in, um, in in doing that. But that's all part of emotion as well. It's mm. um, you know telling yourself, you know, keep going, don't stop, mm. and you know take that opportunity. It's um, uh, this great quote from Thomas Edison. He said, he said, um, what do you say? He said, most people um, overlook opportunity. He said, mm-hmm. most people miss opportunity because it comes dressed in overalls and looks like work. And uh, mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that sums up why a lot of people don't do things. It's like, it's like yeah, it's a good idea, but mm, maybe, maybe not now, maybe later. And mm. the problem is, you know, later often you don't get the second crack at it. You've got a mm. chance to do something. You've got to, you've got to take the shot. You can't yep. say, oh, I'll look at it next year or you know, maybe, maybe next time. It's, well, you know, something's there. If it's got potential, you know, have a crack, see what happens. Mm, mm. And uh, you know, that's that's when the um you know, that's when the amazing stuff can happen. Mm, I love that. So um, one of your philosophies of success is to stick to things and uh, to see through it to the end, right? So just have a crack at it. Um, it's like f- uh, flicking through like a deck of cards. You know, eventually going to hit the hit the joker, right? It's gonna there's gonna be a joker in there somewhere. So. Um, so would you say that you tried a lot of different things uh, in, in your life, like a lot of different types of opportunities that weren't related to trading or was it just in, you know, different opportunities within trading? Would that be the case or? Yeah. All, all the, um, the, the um, career orientated opportunities mm. have all been around, all been around the financial markets. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's, um, like I, you know, I, I look at my first business. So after, after Bankers Trust, it was um, we set up a, a, an online stock market business. Mm. So so that that came about through that was sort of like a you know, came about through opportunity. It was so so Bankers Trust had had, um, had had finished for me, and I was looking, you know, what what am, what am I going to do next? Mm. And um, uh, uh, one of my one of my former colleagues. He had this. He had an idea. He said. Um, he thought. Uh, he came to me and said, "Look, I've got this idea. Um, why don't we set up an online stock market newsletter?" And at the time, do you remember? Um, do you remember Rene Rivkin? He was a he was a colourful stockbroker in the in the eighties and nineties. He probably probably um probably predates you a bit. Uh, <laughs> I was born in the eighties. Yeah, early eighties. Rene Rivkin brought <laughs> back in. You know, 2010 or something like that. Mm. But at the time, he was, he was, you know, he's a household name. And he, and he had this um, stock market newsletter called the Rivkin Report. And he had mm. like, he had something like 50,000 subscribers at its, at its peak. It was, you know, it was huge in the, in the, he probably started around 98, 99, thereabouts. Mm. Mm. And, um, and uh, so we thought, look, we could, we could do something similar to this and we can make it better because we'll, we'll, bring, in, we'll bring in the financial analysis of, of a stock and we'll combine it with, the, with the, uh, how it looks from, a, from a, a technical or a charting perspective, a trading perspective, which is what my background was. And when you get a situation where it looks strong financially and it looks, looks strong on the, on, on the charts, like it's in, a, in an upward trend, well, then mm. that will form the basis of a... Of a, of a recommendation and um, so we, uh, we we created a company and and uh, so that was that was the uh, this is probably one of the it's one of the key opportunities which which I took so mm-hmm. you know taking that opportunity at Bankers Trust in 1991 that was a key moment yep. and this is another key moment and uh, so the two of us start off and it's just um, 
yeah, we had, uh, I, was, I think it was a 28 square metre office in, a, in Australia Square, which was ironic because that's where I'd started my career at Bankers Trust 10 years earlier. We just two flo floors lower in the office space we, we hired. Yeah. So it had that nice little, um, you know, synergy with, um, you know, the starting points. Mm. And uh, yeah, so we, 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 we got together, we started that and, uh, you yeah, know, we built that into a, into a business with, uh, by the time I'd, I left and, you know, Sold out of the business. We had like a, you know, a team of about thirty. So mm. it was from it was from nothing from a, from nothing more than an idea, a standing start. Yeah, we built something of you know, a, you know a really good substance. Mm -hmm. and, That's amazing. Um, it's uh, it's look at the time I thought well look you know it's a good idea so mm. why not why not have a go? Yeah, yeah. I think that's it's. Start look. It, it's it's really difficult for people. Like it was made easier for me because of the fact that I wasn't. I look. I'd been made redundant from my previous job, and due to a bank, the bank being taken over, and um, and there weren't other any other jobs in that in that trading world going at the time. It was low on the market, so I was I was free to sort of make take an opportunity which otherwise could have been quite difficult to take. I think had I been working at Bankers Trust at the time and you know, my old colleague had the idea, I don't think I would have resigned my position to do this. And this is a hard thing for, for you know, any budding entrepreneur who wants to start something. They've often got to leave something to start it. Mm. And, that, and that is really hard. I, you, know, you just you can't underplay how hard that is. And for someone who's you know, a successful entrepreneur who can do that can leave a leave a job to start something on on the on the the premise of what could happen it's a it's such a big leap and i think that's why a lot of people don't do things because they go it's, i'd really love to do this but what if it you know, what if it doesn't work out i've got to i've got to leave a regular paycheck and i've got to i've got to you know, step into the unknown and that unknown is just it's it's just terrifying and I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know that I would have done it because I had a had a had a you know, high paying, high status job. Would I resign from that and you know, take mm -hmm. this opportunity to set up set up something which may or may not work? Don't know. Probably wouldn't have. But mm -hmm. because I wasn't working at the time, it was a lot easier for me to take that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, it's, yeah, look, it's it's a, it's something which everyone with an idea has to work out. If you can, if they can sort of like um, uh, yeah, do something on the side and get it get it moving, so they have got a running start, and then 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 jump into it. You know, that's a, it, you know, that's a, you know, probably a more palatable way for a lot of people to do it. But a lot of people don't even do that. They mm. you know, they they'll go look, look, I'm just going to stay here because it's safe. I got my paycheck. Mm. And you know they never hit the potential where they they could potentially hit, I guess. So mm. yeah, it's it, it, at some point if you're going to if you're going to see opportunities, you've got to find a way. Like how am I going to how am I going to take them? Mm. Um, yeah, it, it is a dilemma. It is a dilemma for people to try and work out how to how to do that. Yeah, it's definitely uh, it's definitely scary. I mean, you're leaving uh, the security of your high paying job. Um, you got the status as well. You're working a bank, and then all of a sudden, you know. Um, yeah, you want to start something that you have no, no um, certainty that you're going to produce any income in the meantime. You got bills piling up, so it's a lot of uh, mental, <laughs> mental anguish you have that you have to overcome. So it's a bit, <laughs> um, yeah. I think that's that's part of the entrepreneur's life. So uh, something that you have to try and overcome, and then, but eventually, I, I guess you know, if you just stick to it, then eventually you get a bit of success, and then that gives you a bit of motivation to continue on, right? So there you go. <laughs> yeah so it's um yeah my last my last paycheck was in mm. um was in july 1999 wow and uh yeah, still remember you know that's all the money that went in the account oh, I'm so okay rich now. <laughs> that's it my last and that that was it that was you know literally my last my last uh, mm. last paycheck awesome. everything since then has been well, i guess it's been it's been being self um self-created mm -hmm. and uh but look left left BT, I don't think I got another, didn't get any more income come through for, I don't know, for almost, almost two years. Mm. So it, um, yeah, it was, was probably, yeah, it took, took a while, took a while for the, you know, 
for the, the idea to have the idea for it to, to, to form it into something mm. and and then to get it moving to the point where it could generate some 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 income mm. there were there, there really were two years in between and and that makes it hard as well yeah. it's like i had the uh i was fortunate to have the resources to be able to go that two years without you know without the income coming in mm. but that's not you know it's not the reality for for, for a lot of people and mm. uh yeah so it, it really does give you a lot of respect for for yeah a lot of these you know the, the entrepreneurs you do see because they mm. do, do create things from nothing mm. and creating something from nothing is is is, is hard it starts yeah. with an idea and then you've got to turn the idea into reality yeah and it takes time mm. it takes time there's no there's no no way around that part of it you've got, <laughs> yeah, to, you got to do it um, yeah. you've got to put the time in without the without the guarantee of the reward at the end. Mm. So speaking of yep. that reward at the end, the reward can be substantial. And that's, I guess that's you know, one of the reasons entrepreneurs do what they do. What they do. Mm, mm, that's right. And uh, speaking of um, creating something, you created a motion trader. So um, yeah, so this is a really amazing. So would you um, explain what is it? What is motion trader to the ones who don't know what it is? Okay. So, um, motion trader it's a, it's um, it's a subscription based service mm -hmm. and what it does it's what, what, what I'm really doing is I'm, I'm helping people make sense of the stock market and and by that I mean I'm not just telling them to buy this and sell that that's a that's a big part of it but I'm also explaining the process and helping them build the, the skills and confidence to 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 apply uh, a, a process of, of investing in, in shares, um, you know, helping them apply that process themselves. Mm. And I think that's the, the, the key to um, being able to, to trade and invest well. You need, to, you, know, you need to understand a process. It's very hard to follow something longer term if you don't really understand why, why you're doing something. Mm. And uh, so, yeah, I put, put a lot of time into uh, producing a weekly report which which does explain the, the process for people and uh, I guess the um, the um, one of the unique factors of motion trader is that it's algorithmic mm. so algorithmic it sounds sounds quite complicated but it's actually quite straightforward it's really where where you're um, creating a, a, a set of um, you're taking if you if you can explain your your process for investing in stocks, well, then you can take that process and um, convert it into computer language. And that is what an algorithm is. It's a, a, a string of code which is telling the computer what to, what to do. Mm. So, and the, the big advantage of, of moving what I do to uh, an algorithmic process is that I can cover so much more ground than I ever could when I was um, um, at a, a discretionary trader and investor, and by discretionary that means someone who, who might you know who who look at each case individually, each stock individually, and go, oh well, look, this is this has got a good balance sheet and share price is doing this, so that's a good idea, and then I move mm. to the next one. And an algorithm doesn't have to go, you know, spend a day analysing a stock. It will mm. analyse the stock based on the criteria it's been given through its algorithms. It will do all that in a in a you know basically in an instant. So I can cover the whole ASX each afternoon. I can analyze the whole ASX each afternoon in in a you know, in the space of about a minute. Mm. And so this gives me amazing reach. And I'm able to look at stocks which most people will uh, will never find on their own because they're they're buried so deep in the ASX. They might be you know ranked stock number 600 out of 2000 like how are you going to find that mm. uh, but if you've got an algorithm you can because you, you you code the algorithm to look for a certain setup so for me i'm looking for stocks which are in a rising trend and um have 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 um reached a, a new high in the share price so you want to see positive momentum and then there's also you know parameters around volatility and volume and so the algorithms can scan for all that. And then I'll get a list of stocks each day going, okay, these stocks meet the criteria. And then I'll send those stocks out to the 
out to the members of my service, the subscribers of my service. Mm. There might be one or two ideas. There might be, you know, it might be, you know, it might be more. It might be none. It all depends what the market's doing. Um, so it's it's uh, you know it's opportunity based, not like mm. okay, look, we're going to give a quota of stocks to buy each week. Yeah, that's you know, that's just silly. That that's just uh, you know setting setting people up to lose money. Yep. it's about you know when the opportunities are there, we'll take them. When they're not there, we'll sit and wait, be patient. Mm. And uh, yeah, yeah. So that's really that good. was that was really a, an evolutionary um, step for me, moving from yeah, just looking at opportunity to opportunity to move into the algorithms, mm. and and then then being able to turn that into a service, which I could. Uh, which I could build a business out of. Mm. And yet you know, people sometimes say, say, well, if you're so clever and you've worked all this out, why are you, why are you telling us about it? Why aren't you just doing it for yourself? Mm. And now here's the thing. A lot, of, a lot of people think that if you're any good, it's all about keeping the secret to yourself. Mm. But you know, there's, there's really no secrets in the market. It's all about processes that, people have used for, for, for decades to make mm. money. And there are all sorts of processes that make money. Mine's just one of them. Mm. And there's no need to keep it a secret because there are so many stocks and so many opportunities. I came to the realization years ago that there were, there were more opportunities in the markets and I've got capital to follow. And mm. that you know, the place of pretty much anyone. There's, there's more stuff going on than, than anyone can just do on their own. So it makes good sense to make a business out of out of helping others find the type of opportunities that that I trade myself, and uh, so that's what that's what Motion Trade is all about. It's about like, and I use it. I use it myself. So my, mm. I've, I've got a, a Motion Trader portfolio that I set this up five years ago. Yep. Um, because I thought, because I know I know from experience, people say you know they come up with this. If you're so good, why aren't you doing it for for yourself? Mm. So when they say that now, I go, well, actually, I am doing it for myself and here's my, here's here are my results. Yeah, yeah. So for the last five years, I think, last, I look, look last week, I think my, um, for the last five, five years, I think my total gain, um, excluding dividends, I think it was 75%. Mm. Um, so that motion trader portfolio has grown 75% over the last five years in, in, really in total. Mm. And I think the All Ordinary is over the same time. It's about half that. So you know, it, 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 it shows that uh, you can produce a service which you can offer to you know, everyday people. Mm. You can use it yourself to prove that it actually doesn't work. And it's not mm. just you know, some you know, pie in the sky theory that you know, makes money for the, for the operator of the, of the mm. business but mm. doesn't actually make any money. Yep. So it actually makes money because you know, I do it myself mm. and, uh, and, and can, can help real people with everyday jobs yeah. doing their own thing that want ideas to invest in the stock market for themselves mm. and um and yeah and, and help them do well mm. and uh, it that's really good email mm. from someone who, who says look i've been i've been in the market for years i've struggled i've you know look, i get i get i get a lot of a lot of people in there guys in there oh i say you know 50, 60, 70 years old, and they say, I've been in the market for 10 or 20 years and I've never been able to make it work for me. I've, there's, I've tried all sorts of things. I just can't quite figure it out. Mm. And it often turns out they're just missing like, you know, part of the puzzle, one piece of the puzzle. They might have yep. a great entry technique and, and they're good at being patient, but they're just, they're getting something wrong. And mm. it often turns out, so often it turns out they've got a problem with when to sell. Yeah. Either they're holding their dud investments too long they're selling their their good investments too early, or they're getting these great stocks and they're holding them all the way up, and then they mm. hold them all the way back down. Mm. And the problem is they just don't know when to sell. And this is such a, a common problem. This because so many people will tell you when to buy. You know, there's a you know there's a you know a queue out the the back door of people telling you when to buy. Let's look at broker research and and um, you know the the. I think there've been studies on this where it's like I, I don't know the numbers offhand, but it might be like seventy or eighty percent of the recommendations that are buy, mm. and a, a fraction of them that are sell. So everyone's telling you when to buy, but when to sell is just like well, sort of like a bit of an afterthought. It's like oh, we'll get in. This is a great stock, and we'll kind of figure out when to get out later on. It's like here's the thing: you don't make your money when you buy a stock; you make your money when you sell a stock. 
So mm. your exit strategy is it's so important. It's the key to being profitable at what you do. So if you're a buy and holder, buy and hold investor, and you buy in um, an index, an index fund, well, that's that's a bit different. You can sort of you know you don't need the same. You might be holding something, but 20, 30 years, that's fine, that's different. Mm. But if you've got a more active style of investing, you might hold, want to hold something for you know, a few years and then you need an exit point when the situation changes. Mm. And uh, you know, that, that's, where, that's where, where I come in with a, with a process for getting out. And uh, so look, what, what I do, it's like let a profitable investment, you stay with a profitable investment for as long as you can, maximize your, your gains from it, and uh, when it starts to turn down, you'll have a predefined exit point mm. where it's no, oh, look, I'll give it a little bit longer. I'll see what happens. Um, it's like, you know where, you know, you, you know your exit point at every, every stage of the, of the investment from the, from the day you get in to the day you get out. There's, um, you know, there's a, a calculated and, and predefined it's a point and and yeah and the results i get from people are you know it's yeah, it's really good it's really good when, you, when they come to you and say look you know thanks thanks for like you know i, I now understand it i now get it it's um i, I, was, I, was, I was messing up my exits and mm. now i know now mm. i know let my good ones run cut my ones which aren't working and uh and and give my good ones you know move to room room to move around because mm. that's something a lot of people don't do they uh you know they get a they get a maybe they get a, a 30 40 percent profit and they get nervous and they go oh look you know this 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 might come back this might you know what if this comes back and i give all that that money back so i'll um i'll, I'll let it keep running but if it comes back five percent i'll i'll cut it and i'll get out mm -hmm. and the problem with that is five percent movement you know five percent to move it's not enough breathing space so you know they invariably get you know they end up exiting their position and mm -hmm. then the position could may, maybe have continued on you know, another two, three, four hundred percent. Some of them do, but unless you give them enough room to move around, yeah, it's it's very hard to get that gain. So that's you know a common issue you see. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, look, look, I spend a lot of time explaining, talking about selling, when to sell. It's it's such a big area. I can't it I can't is. do it justice a, in a, in a yeah. few minutes. But um, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, that, that's what that's what motion trade is really really all about. Mm, that's about really finding good. those ideas and having a, a strategy to to maximise gains from it, and having an exit strategy, to get out, maximise profits, minimise losses, find ideas that that you, you're almost never going to find on your own because we're using algorithms to scan our two thousand odd stocks, mm. and uh, and then then you're basically cherry picking. You're taking the, the the stuff out of the ASX which is working and going up, and you're ignoring the parts which which are, which are going sideways and falling. Mm. And that's how the um the 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 process gets us our performance over mm. over time. I definitely see the uh, the benefits of having um uh, some software that will scan the markets for you and find like the entry and exit points because you know, we're all really busy. We're busy. We've got our own things to do. We don't want to be staring at the markets all the time, analyzing, you know, a lot of people have got that time to go through the markets, but you know, your, your software can help look for the right entry points and, you know, and uh, to help find those exit points as well. So that's really good. Um, I know that's, yeah, it's going to help a lot of people. So <laughs> that's really yeah, good. A lot, a lot of people think, um, think uh, trading's exciting. They're drawn yeah. to it because they're oh, looking at screen lines like, all day. <laughs> Yeah, look, look, I, I was once too. I once thought, mm. oh, geez, that's this is exciting. Mm. And uh, but excitement is is probably the worst reason in the world to get involved with um, with the financial markets. Mm. There, it's um, if you it, look, there are so many great things you can do to get excitement. Coming into the markets isn't one of them. The markets should actually be quite you know, quite dull. It's mm. um, it's you, you 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 do your research, you place your um, make your investments. And then you're patient and you give them time to do what they do. Mm. Um, day trading. Some people talk about day trading. That's, that's, look, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a different, different style. That's more of what I was doing when I was back at Bankers Trust. And even still, that's not really meant to be exciting either. Um, there are times when markets are moving quickly, but you, know, you shouldn't be doing things. There's still, they're still following a process. It's just moving a little bit. It's just, you, you're doing it sort of like on, on fast forward. 
Mm. And uh, but still, it's still not meant to be exciting. It's still you know, it's still long periods of dullness where where nothing's happening. Mm. So yeah, it's excitement and financial markets don't just don't don't mix. It's um, I, I was watching uh, um, uh, Jimmy Barnes. He was being being interviewed recently, and he said he said um, yeah he said so many people think that you know touring with um, with Cole Chisel back in the day. They said oh geez it must be must have been so glamorous, mm. such a glamorous lifestyle, touring with a band. And he goes, um, he goes, um, no, no, it's not. It's um, two hours of, you know, of, 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 of um, high intensity fun when you're on stage, and 22 hours of boredom yeah. as you're as you're waiting for the next, you know, the next concert. Mm. Trading something and investing it, it's 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 not dissimilar. It's um, it's you know, long periods of you know, not much, not much to do, mm-hmm. and you know short bursts of activity where you're, where you're putting an investment on or you're, or you're taking it off. Um, you know, you get a, you get, you get these things like um, we had with the, the, the COVID crash where there's going to be a lot of activity for a month because maybe you'll be closing out positions as the, as the market's coming down. Mm. But those events are, are few and far between most of the time. It's like um, in an average week, I may only have one or two trades. I have an 80 stock for, portfolio. But I may only have one or two investments that I need to um, adjust each week. Um, mm. Some weeks be more, some weeks there may be nothing to do because everything's just doing what's doing, and and um, you, know, you you make your money by by you know you. This is oh, an old you know fabled old trader called Jesse Livermore. You know mm. back in the back in the early 1900s, he said. I may, it, it wasn't my, um, uh, something along the lines of... Yeah, um, very powerful insights, Jesse Livermore. Yeah. Yeah, he said, I, I made my money by my sitting, not my doing. Yeah. It's, um, so it's, uh, you don't, it's not constant activity. It's, you know, get the right ideas, take a position, be patient, wait, give them time. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so one more question is, let's say that you'll go into a time machine. Uh, press the button, go back 10, 15, maybe 20 years. Um, and what would you say to your younger self? Oh, look, um, I think, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd say, uh, you, know, you know, step outside your comfort zone. Mm. And look, I'd say to, I'd say to any, any youngster, and I say this to my kids, I say, you know, step outside your comfort zone. It's um so you know what what I um what I do with my kids I get a get a piece of paper and I'll I'll um draw a circle and I'll draw a little stick person inside the circle and say you know that's you and the circle around you is your comfort zone mm. and then I'll draw a you know a big circle you know um, off to the you know the top right of the of the page and uh, and write this is where the magic happens and go okay. How do you get from where you are to over here, where the magic happens? Mm. And you know, someone will say, "Oh, well, I guess you got to, you know, you got to leave the comfort zone. You got to, you got to, you know, step out of it. And you know, that's it. You got to step outside your comfort zone to reach where the magic happens. Mm. And it's, it's, um, yeah, it's just such an, an important thing to do uh, to do things which are uncomfortable." And the, the, there was an old former coach of the, um, I think it was the Chicago Bulls, the basketball team. And he said to his, said to his players, he said, you know, guys, you've got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. And there's a, there's, there's a lot, to be, lot to be said for that. It's like often we do things that, um, you know, we, we say, look, oh, yeah, look, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. And, you know, that, that's all good. But, you know, if everyone just does what's, comfortable it's hard to really like you know as they say you know move the needle mm. how do you move the needle if you're just doing what's comfortable it's um you know the you know the great stuff happens when when you do stuff which you're going oh geez you know i feel a bit you know my, my stomach's a bit queasy about about doing this and that was like that was you know that was starting fat profits that was you know stepping outside my comfort zone you know i did that going oh, okay i'm gonna give it a go um but you know I remember coming, sitting on the bus, coming home each night. This is now, you know, first first six months. So I was living in my um, my now wife's um, brother's garage. So we'd moved from our um, moved from our apartment at Cremorne 
point on Sydney Harbour with the mm. you know the, the Harbour Bridge view, you, mm-hmm. you know the, the young investment banker's life. Yeah. To um to, to conserve capital, we moved to the brother's renovated garage. That was a nice garage. We weren't sitting next to the, you know the, the ute or anything like that. That was um you know it'd been, been converted to a guest room, but it was yeah you know it's yeah it's the entrepreneur's story. Oh, you know, I started off living in the garage, and um, <laughs> we all built yeah, from from the garage. Yeah. <laughs> going you know. Is this ever going to work? You know, we've got you know we've got one subscriber this week. They've paid you know, they've paid six hundred dollars. You know, you know our advertising bill is you know you know ten times that each month. How are mm-hmm. we going to ever make this work? And so that was that was really like you know I was out I was outside my comfort zone, but it was like you know, have faith in what we're doing because it's a good idea. We can see the potential. Got to stick with it. Just stay the course. Stick with it. It was uncomfortable, but you know that's. But that's where the magic happened because we did that. We stepped outside the comfort zone. Mm. And uh, look, I'd, I'd, also, I'd also say to myself um, and, you know, any youngster, you know, don't fear failing. Like so many of us, we don't do things because we go, well, what if it doesn't work? Well, you know, what if it doesn't work? It's, mm. um, you know, understand what your downside is and go, okay, look, if, if the downside's acceptable to me, well, you know, I shouldn't fear, I shouldn't fear failing, you know, pride and ego, all this sort of stuff, you know, forget that, 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 that that's not really important. It's, um, you know, you, it's, it's okay to, to try at something and, and not succeed. And the, the lessons you learn from failing can then be the, you know, it can be the, like, the scaffolding, if you like, the scaffolding for, for your next, next success. Mm. And, um, and yeah, you know, you also you, know, the, you never want to look back. You never want to look back and go, "Oh, look, I could have been." You yeah, know, that's I could true. have been this, or I could have done that. At least if you fail, you can say, "Well, look, I gave it. I gave it every every crack. I gave it everything I had. It didn't work out." Mm. And you know, and sometimes that's that is going to happen. It's it's you know, it's inevitable if you if you if you develop a habit of stepping outside your comfort zone you're not going to have a hundred percent strike rate. It doesn't work like that. You're going to have, you're going to have the failures and, but you know, don't put off doing something because of that. Uh, mm. Cause yeah, look, it's like an investment process for me. I've got plenty of losing trades, mm. but I keep my losses relatively small. And for the ones that work, you know, I, my, my most, profitable trade in the last couple of years. I think it was like 500% of stock. Jumbo Interactive was a stock, went up 500%. Um, so that's not like, you know, most stocks don't do that. Most, you know, a lot of stocks will finish up with a relatively small loss. So mm. they're the failures. They don't matter because it just takes one big gain and it just overwhelms all those, all those you know, you know numerous small losses. So you know, they're insignificant. You know, mm. one five hundred percent will pay for you know years worth of worth of small losses, and it's not like that's your only success either. You've probably got you know because if you've got a um, a process which um, generates repeatable success, well then you're going to end up with you know a number of um, uh, strong performing stocks. Mm. Um, so yeah, you know, whether you know, so don't fear failure, whether it be with um, with a stock portfolio with it or with the business idea or some other opportunity. Mm. They're the, they're the big things. Nice. They're the big things. Um, you know, I, I, t- I tell my kids, I tell myself, I'd tell, you know, my, um, the, the year 12 leavers at my old high school, mm. step outside your comfort zone. Love it. Don't that's where the magic, you. that's where the magic happens. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So how can um, people get in contact with you as well? If they want to find out more about what you're doing. Well, I've, um, I've, uh, I've set up a page called um, motiontrader.com.au forward slash UB Relentless. So cool. easy for people to remember. And they can, um, and I've set up a, a, a four part video series, which, mm-hmm. which explains the process that I, that I use to, to approach investment markets. And it, um, look, it, it, it uh, gives, gives people the, the, you know, the foundations of the, of the strategy, you know, what the, what the key rules are about mm-hmm. you know, trading with trends and running profits, cutting losses. I talk about how I do it 
how I um, how I systemize that process to to make it uh, make success repeatable. Awesome. And uh, so yeah, look, so it's a yeah special page for your for your cool. listeners. Thank you very much. Motiontrader.com.au forward slash you be relentless. You be relentless. Awesome. All right. So Jason, it's a true pleasure to interview you today. Um, and, you know, I wish you all the best for your future endeavors. I know that you're going to, you know, uh, achieve a lot of plenty more great things um, that you have in life as well. And uh, yeah, wish you all the best for your future endeavors, mate. Quite. It's been, been fantastic. Really enjoyed speaking to you. And uh, look, I've got to say, I love what you do as well. It's, um, you know, the, the, the trailer you have on your YouTube channel where you talk about Steve Jobs's path. You know, I just, mm. just love that. Mm. Um, it's, um, if anyone hasn't, hasn't heard it, go and listen to you know, Steve Jobs and his Stanford um, speech to the, you know, the, the, the leaving mm. year. It's, it's, um, yeah, it's really inspirational stuff. Great. All right. Thanks a lot for that, Jason. We really appreciate it.